Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from Mishmix Media, this is day one of Industry Samurai Conference and Awards. Uh, there have been two sessions before this, and this is one of the most important sessions that we have on a very relevant topic. Has COVID-19 accelerated Industry 4.0 adoption? We have eminent speakers with us to take the discussion forward. I will introduce the speakers. We have Mr. Arun Rao, Senior Director, Geo Sales and Strategy, India, Dassault Systems. Dr. Harish Pan, Managing Director, Advanced Technology. Mr. Srikant Aradhya, Chief Expert in Industry 4.0, Robert Bosch Engineering Services and Business Solutions. Mr. A.N. Chandramauli, CEO, ANCM Management and Consultants. And then uh, we have yours truly, Anand Pandey, who's the editor of Dynamic Manufacturing India magazine. I'll ask uh, yeah. our eminent panelists to tell us about their experience, their work background, so that we are familiarized more uh, with them and their work experience. I'll start with Srikanta. Srikanta. Yeah, thank you, Anand Pandey. First of all, let me thank uh, you and your team for giving me an opportunity to take part in this panel discussion. Uh, I also heartily welcome all the participants of this discussion. Uh, myself, uh, Srikanta Aradhya. Uh, I work as a chief expert uh, in Industry 4.0 at Robert Bosch. I happen to have around 28 plus years of experience in manufacturing IT and factory automation. I, have, I am responsible for technical solutions and business development in Industry 4.0 at Bosch. Uh, prior to Bosch, uh, I have been working as a principal consultant in Infosys and uh, DGM at Panuk India for quite a long time. Uh, in addition to my present work, I also spearhead the Industry Academia Collaboration Industry 4.0 from Bosch. I also take up mentoring startups from Bosch. And uh, this year has been very special for me. Uh, I was a part of a team which we won the Robert Bosch Innovation Award for Bosch India with our uh, new product called as Device Bridge. So once again, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, let's go on. Anand? Anand? Thank you, Srikanta. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Rao, I can. Yeah, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you, Anand, uh, uh, again, uh, for giving this opportunity to be part of this uh, uh, discussion along with uh, all the other eminent uh, panelists. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing stay. Uh, doing good and staying safe uh, during this time of uh, pandemic. I know uh, things are getting better, but it's uh, still not over. Uh, my name is Arun Rao. Uh, I take care of uh, the channel sales as well as the geo strategy working at Dassault Systems, uh, which is part of the Dassault Group. I'm uh, predominantly a, a mechanical engineer, having graduated uh, almost 25 years ago from Bangalore University. And uh, since then, have been in this uh, field of digital technologies. Of my 25 years of experience, I spent almost 24 years working for Dassault Systems itself, uh, having started my career with a company called as Deneb Robotics, which was uh, thereafter acquired by Dassault Systems. So I'm pretty much in the system uh, since uh, 1995. And uh, that's where I have worked very closely or at least got introduced to uh, uh, Shrikanta, as well as have worked briefly with uh, Mr. A. N. Chandramoli, who would introduce uh, themselves as part of this panelist. So uh, in this 25 glorious years at Dassault Systems, uh, I've had, uh, I've worn different uh, uh, caps. The first uh, seven years, I was part of the technical services team, uh, working and supporting numerous uh, clients of uh, Dassault Systems, right from Honda, Toyota in Japan to Audi, as well as uh, Mercedes in Germany. 
and also Airbus, British Aerospace, etc. So having a diversified experience. Thereafter, uh, the next seven years, I was working uh, in software development, the research and development being of Tassel Systems, where I spent the, the, the next seven years uh, working on uh, the next age technologies and was the product manager of the entire robotic suite of products from Dassault Systems. Thereafter, the seven year reach again caught on to me and that's, that's when I moved uh, into customer facing role again. And since then I have been taking care of the sales with uh, Dassault Systems and also looking at the, the strategy for Dassault Systems uh, here in India. So that's the quick brief and uh, yes, it would be very interesting to share the, the experiences that I have collated over the last 25 years during the, the panel discussions today. Thank you, Anand, and back to you. Thank you. Mr. Chandramali. Yes, good afternoon to one and all and thank you very much, Mr. Pandey, to invite us for this program. And to the eminent panelist, I am very grateful. I have more than four decades of work experience with the multiple sectors, including automobile, consumer durables, consumer products, refrigeration, air conditioning, electrical sector, and above all, the last 20 years in machine tool industry. I headed the company called Makino, world famous Japanese company, and headed the company called Starag India, world famous European company. And that is where the advanced technologies exposure happened to me and uh, travel widely globally as well as within India to multiple sectors of customers. And I'm very delighted after retiring from Starag as MD, I continue to be in the board of Starag and also advising many people and trying to learn something on the subject of industry 4.0 and smart manufacturing. And I'm a, a mentor and advisor in several forums such as Capital Goods Skill Council, Aerospace Aviation Skill Council, and the board member of these two councils then also into Tata Indian Ship Skill as a strategic advisor, Bangalore Chamber of Commerce. But wherever I go, they invite me to be an evangelist of Industry 4.0, but still learning that subject. And thank you very much. Today is going to be a great learning for me in this panel. And hopefully tomorrow when the awards are given, I would like to join and uh, part, part of it. And some of my good friends are winning the awards, I'm told. And thank you so much. Looking forward to the panel, healthy panel discussion and the question answers from the target uh, I mean, the people who have come down to listen to us. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Dr. Pan. Hi. Uh, it's a pleasure to interact with uh, this eminent panel. And uh, thanks, Mr. Pandey, for inviting us uh, for this wonderful discussion. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by qualification, and uh, I have about 37 years of experience. I work with HL, Marty, General Motors, Jindals, and then uh, for 13 odd years, I was managing director for Hanson Industries. Presently, I'm managing director for advanced technologies where we work on engineering services and consultancy domain. I'm also India partner for Rigorous Consulting. Uh, it's a uh, UK and Netherlands based uh, and India based uh, consultancy firm uh, in various verticals. Uh, so I had uh, experience of uh, automotive industry, aerospace, uh, steel, plastics, composites, uh, engineering services, uh, and now as a consultant in multiple verticals. Uh, uh, now in terms of my interest, my interest uh, recently has been to develop next generation leaders and to this, augment this and help in this uh, drive I have been going to various IEMs and various uh, technical institutes uh, for giving various lectures. Uh, I'm associated uh, with uh, startups, incubation centers. Uh, I'm global mentor for uh, supply chain and various other uh, topics. Uh, I am in an MBA program recently launched by government of India uh, for the innovation and entrepreneurship uh, by Viltec uh, University. Um, I am in uh, Board of Governors and Board of Studies of uh, various institutes and universities. Uh, I'm associated with 35 odd uh, um, uh, organizations in various capacities. Um, my interest uh, subjects recently in the last five years in particular happens to be blockchain, IoT, Industry 4.0, 
and uh, I have been uh, a task force member for SIEM, uh, Society of Automotive Engineers, uh, 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 Automotive Manufacturers, and uh, 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 Manufacturing Associations. So they have a digital task force, uh, digital transformation task force. So I'm a member of it uh, and actively working there. So this is uh, short and sweet about me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Pant. Now we'll begin the discussion about technology 4.0 adoption. And easily, this is the most talked about the topics in these times. Uh, we have been talking about this subject for a long time, but this crisis has really put this at the front and center of public debates. As a, a famous uh, author, Mr. Harari recently wrote that this year is a fluid time in history where many trends have accelerated and many trends have faded out. Industry 4.0 is a trend that has certainly accelerated this year. Now, my question to the panelists is, can we have, what would be a comparative analysis of what the level of Industry 4.0 adoption was pre-COVID and how it has been this year. I'll start with Srikanta. Thanks. Thank you, Anand Pandey. Uh, so maybe <clears throat> I will start off with like this. Uh, the perspective of uh, the entire manufacturing community has changed uh, after COVID. Uh, if you see before COVID, the manufacturers were looking at industry 4.0. It's not that uh, they were not aware of industry 4.0. They were well aware. There was a lot of interest. There was a lot of hype and there was a lot of traction in the manufacturers community. Uh, but uh, they looked at it with uh, a bit of suspicion, uh, maybe a bit of uh, cat on the wall. Maybe let me see who will adapt it first. Let me come on the race next. So this was the way they were uh, thinking. But uh, and at that time, uh, Industry 4.0 was more looking at uh, increasing the functionality, giving you better uh, profitability, increasing throughput, increasing productivity. So these were the real aspiration goals of Industry 4.0 at that point of time. But once COVID happened, the perspective got changed. Now the manufacturers are looking at survival. They are looking at surviving this entire mess and then growing after that. So now they are looking at solutions which can really enable them and aid them in this journey. So this is one change which has happened. The second change is COVID has also amplified the benefits of Industry 4.0 in the sense that uh, now you have a clear demarcation of haves and have nots. People who had a digital technology at, at least up to some level in their manufacturing companies and the people who did not have any of them or who really did not care much to that. So with COVID, once COVID happened, you could see manufacturers who had already connected their assets, who could do remote monitoring, who could visualize their uh, shop floor, able to swim in this mess much easily rather than people who had not done any of these things. So instead of uh, somebody telling about the benefits, now the benefits are getting very evident. Like for example, we, I can recount from some of our own uh, business and personal experiences. Uh, from Bosch, we had made many of these Industry 4.0 solutions. Actually, actually, Bosch was one of the pioneers who established Industry 4.0 in the world. For example, we had a mobility app by which uh, any manufacturer could uh, get all the data of what is happening in his shop floor on his mobile phone. So whenever we went into any client conferences or client discussions and showed this uh, application, uh, many times people used to laugh, Why well, do I really need it? I can as well go to my factory and check, or as I can ask my manufacturing head to check it. So these were the sorts of things. People felt that, okay, this is good, but this is not a must have. But cut today, today, when we meet customer and show them such an app, people jump at that, can I have it now? Because now you know how much difficult it is to go into your factory and really look at the, or monitor what is happening. This is one, one, one such thing for visualization. Similarly, I can talk of a solution which we had called a smart man for planning, where when uh, operators get into the factory, uh, they were automatically allocated to their workplaces based on their skill sets, based on the machine availability, and also based on the attendance. 
So this could actually reduce maybe half an hour of the supervisor's time or the shift in charge time. But once again, this solution in pre-COVID time had traction, but not to such a great extent. But today, people or manufacturers feel that you need to able to find out who is attending, who is not attending, change the schedules, make them uh, go as per the skill set or make them go as per the delivery requirements and all these things automatically done because you can't have a person doing and sitting it in the factory and doing it. So this is also one more uh, such solution which has really uh, got changed. So uh, we can recount many such experience, but what I'm basically telling is uh, COVID one is, it has amplified the benefits of industry 4.0. It has changed the entire perspective towards manufacturing and uh, how the technologies of manufacturing can really help. Even for example, in ARVR, augmented reality, we had developed a lot of solutions. Whenever we went to customers and showed the real world, yes. It was like a generated from a book on thing, but here we are augmenting a uh, application with uh, real world data, with real world images, with guidance, all these things. Now, post COVID, this is one of the most interesting solution which customers want. They want, they feel that the experts need not be on their shop floor. They feel if there is an expert who can sit in his office and guide somebody on the shop floor, it is a boon. Similarly, if somebody can remote monitor and operate a robot from his house, it is a real good value addition today. So the technologies which were uh, nice to have, have become very must have these days because situation has changed. And uh, one more important uh, thing which has changed is, uh, for example, I basically, we work more in the automotive sector. We work for uh, automotive companies and auto tire one companies. Uh, Pre-COVID, if you see the automotive demand itself was coming down because of all these Ola, Ubers, people used to feel that the public transport is there. So why should I invest on a car of my own? But post-COVID, uh, the entire situation is 180 degree reversed. So we find, uh, Automotive companies are really in demand. They are making more cars, they are selling more, and they are also ready to invest now. So that way, even the economic situation has given a turnaround. I think COVID-19 was one of the good things which happened to automotive sector, if you ask me. Otherwise, uh, things would have really been bad. Uh, but having said that, uh, what I'm basically telling is, uh, now the technologies are available, the solutions are available, and the manufacturers have also realized that they need to jump onto the bandwagon to survive and to grow. Thank you, Thank you. Pandey, and back to you. Thank you, Srikantha. Mr. Rao, your take. Mr. Rao. Oops, I'm sorry. I was speaking and I did not realize that I was on mute. Uh, thanks, Anand, for uh, just highlighting uh, that I was not speaking or I was not audible. <laughs> So I quite agree with what Ananda said. Uh, there are different uh, elements to it, uh, but I just wanted to start uh, with the the premise of uh, Industry 4.0, which is basically a modern uh, insurg uh, insurgency that connects people, process, and machines uh, together. And all the available digital tools are leading towards Industry 4.0. Uh, I'm sure that uh, many of you know that Dassault Systems actually provides. Uh, business and people with the 3D experience universe or platform that uh, uh, basically allow uh, companies to imagine uh, imagine sustainable innovations that is capable of harmonizing product nature and life. So uh, if you talk about these technologies, the digital tools, to me, I think they existed right from the day I started my career with the Denim Robotics. So we used to work on the offline programming of tools uh, and I still recall working uh, with Mr. Chandramoli while he was at Makino doing the offline programming of the CNC machines. So things have evolved a lot. Actually, this brings to me a very small anecdote that uh, I had a few, few, I would say months ago when I spoke to one of my clients that uh, we do industry 4.0. So we, we have end-to-end -end connections. So the anecdote was like the person asked me, uh, Arun, which end to which end are you looking at connecting? So when I said end to end, he asked me which end to which end, because this <laughs> to me uh, was very amusing in the sense that the way he asked, because after he asked, I was basically thinking and then realized 
that there are so many organizations which talk about uh, industry 4.0 and the end to end connectivity that people have got lost uh, somewhere we had uh, erp companies talking about end to end uh, industry 4.0 uh, we had uh, companies like crm tools which were talking and then the erp etc so we had so many of them uh, so what has really happened now with the pre covid and the post covid with this scenario as anant uh, uh, anand mentioned has made this technologies to be mandatory and try to see how we can actually move forward uh, with this and uh, it has become a part of life or mandatory for things to move ahead etc so we at daso systems provide different uh, digital tools which connect the machines people processes in order to realize the industry 4.0 so i'll tell you uh, there has been a sea of change uh, that we are seeing uh, one uh, we 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 hear a lot of companies coming back and asking how is it that we can digitize or digitalize now uh, because during the pandemic everything came to a standstill and the only people who were working were the one who were connected to each other with digital technologies etc and that is how people have started thinking or the board members have started asking their cxos to see how they can actually digitize uh, and uh, incorporate some of these principles that lead to industry 4.0 i can tell you uh, with our solutions uh, i can take some of the names like companies like general aeronautics uh, who been working with different kinds of uh, uav systems you know both fixed wing as well as hybrid they develop different kind of uh, multicopters with uh advanced capabilities even during the pandemic stay uh, time you know when there was a lockdown they were actually leveraging these tools which connect the people uh process and machines and developing products uh and you wouldn't believe that uh, some of their uh, uh multicopters were used by the bangalore uh, uh, pwd in order to do uh sanitization Uh, or carry out sanitization of different parts of bangalore i can also while uh, uh, shrikanta mentioned about the oems who are now very eager to in- adopt to these technologies uh, i cater to some of the uh, the tier 1 tier 2 uh, customers of uh, uh, daso systems predominantly in the automotive space there is one such company called as sandar automotive or sandar technologies which adopted the daso systems 3d experience platform and they did this to basically centralize the entire real time data that they were actually getting from the shop floor so one of the key aspect was to digitally manage their entire product development process the planning process etc right uh, so that the design teams engineering teams are able to come together and collaborate very effectively so this is how uh, a company like sandar technologies has been able to leverage these digital tools to basically make sure that the end oem uh, that they serve who have this policies will be able to uh, accelerate their use of uh, digital tools towards industry 4.0 on the same side i also see another bangalore based uh, company called as suprajit industries uh, which is a very well known tier uh, one and tier two suppliers for various industries also leveraging the digital tools in form of uh, 3d experience platform so they have leveraged it over the last few years uh, especially during this covid time when uh, uh, people were working from home their product development team as well as process management team was uh, leveraging these tools uh, in order to be uh, working and uh, i think uh, the benefits of providing a integrated centralized solution uh, which also acts as a single source of truth is something that has enabled many of uh, such customers to be working during this pandemic and during this uh, work from home uh, time so this is where i can just narrate as to based on my experience as to how uh, leveraging the digital tools people have uh, moved closer towards the industry 4.0 and stayed afloat during this tough times that we had seen back to you anand thank you so much mr rao as a chandramouli okay thank you 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pandey. I think uh, excellent pearls of wisdom from Bosch and from the Sol Systems who are actually implementing the digital transformation. I will share something which is more strategic and uh, conceptual in nature. What has happened before COVID? What is happening during COVID? And what is happening after COVID? You know, we had to look at the three periods in perspective. And I was lucky to do some research on this over the last six months and participated in many forums. And I realized that this three segments of before, during, and after, also going through and uh, undergoing through a, a change of uh, perspective over the last six months. I will just illustrate this point. The driving factors, the COVID-19 has hit all the manufacturers with no exception starting with food and beverage, food and beverage on one end, FMCG, to the aerospace at the other end, spectrum. In unexpected ways, first time in modern manufacturing history, demand uncertainty, supply uncertainty, and resource uncertainty. Resource means workforce, manpower, and money. When there is no business, the money cash flow is also big, in a big way affected. So demand uncertainty, supply uncertainty, and resource uncertainty, and more important, at the same time, and more important, globally. So three uncertainties happening simultaneously and globally. So this is unprecedented with the previous crisis. For example, 2009, we had this financial crisis. In 2000 or so, we had this 9-11 crisis. And then we had that... Uh, you know, those Gulf, Gulf War and all, See, several crises starting with Second World War. I'm not getting into that. But for the first time, we have many, many challenges. We have this concept of VUCA world, but so far VUCA world could not be illustrated by anybody. 2020 is really VUCA world. Volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Maybe we have to add some more words to it. But another interesting aspect is social distancing has never been a major aspect in any of this crisis. One of the reasons that Industry 4.0 is becoming important, both the digital platform or the pillar and the automation pillar. There are two pillars to Industry 4.0. Everybody is thinking only about the digital pillar in the world. But Industry 3.0 is focusing on automation pillar. But the moment digital and automation come together, we have a Industry 5.0. And that is being driven by social distancing. Half the workforce is not available. Migrant labor have gone from uh, uh, Delhi to Ludhiana. And office employees and knowledge workers are unable to work in their respective places. Factories are not designed for working remotely. And uh, there is disruption of supply chain parts in every sector. Aerospace sector being the worst affected. Automobile sector, yes. Our colleagues said automobiles are picking up. But they are struggling to get that one bolt from that one particular supplier. I know it for a fact, actually. With the two-wheeler industry growing tremendously during Corona. But some parts are missing all the time. But during the last 10 years, after the financial crisis, two technologies took up beautifully. Artificial intelligence, especially in consumer sector, and IoT to some extent in technology area, Internet of Things. Because the predictability issue, capacity issue, flexibility, all these were evergreen for the last 10 years. But during COVID, what happened is the social distancing, information not available, uncertainty in demand and supply, these became extremely important. So what I want to touch upon is basically the driving factors which are happening now. A new word has been coined. We always talk about quality, delivery, cost, you know, cost reduction, efficiency, excellence. The new terminology has come in now, resilience. Business resilience in the medium term during the COVID and in the revival term after COVID. What is business resilient? The flexible and dynamic nature of uh, running the business. Every line have to produce any product that you want at any time. Now, these are the big challenges. So I realize that some of the things which happened during, uh, we will talk about the technology and other things. But when the crisis broke out, a completely new situation particularly healthcare industry, it started off. Medical facility and medical devices. Two-wheeler industry and four-wheeler industry started producing even what is called the ICU ventilators. 
3D printing picked up tremendously. I think we will talk about technology later on. But simulation tools such as digital twin, so far we thought it's a luxury, you know, before 2019, a ah, digital twin and all big investment. Now digital twin has become necessity. We say necessity is a mother of invention, right? So in my experience with machine tool industry, I realized earlier people are saying, oh, these are all options. Now options have become standard, pro standard element in the machine tools. There are no more options. A digital or a smart feature of a machine, that's such as sensors and edge devices and analytics and visualization and dashboard, et cetera, are, become, are becoming a necessity today. Product development to after sales service, the entire gamut of product life cycle management has now become driven by industry 4.0, rightfully so. Earlier, we were looking at silos, you know, Chalo, let us digitize manufacturing. Chalo, let us digitize marketing. Uh, digital marketing was very famous for the last 10 years. You know? Why everybody was digitally marketing only? Why not digitally manufacturing? Why not digitally supply chain? Why not digitally R&D? Why not digitally after sale service? That thought is now coming the, during Corona. And post Corona, those companies or who are adopting during Corona will accelerate with an advantage. So ladies and gentlemen who are listening today, the key point is the competitive advantage which Michael Porter wrote those days. He wrote about differentiation and cost leadership. Now we have to bring in a third one called resilience, which is neither differentiation nor cost leadership. is altogether a different scenario. And I, I think we'll talk about many, many applications as a, as a program goes. But very important thing I want to tell you, the integration of all these technologies are more important than looking at any one silo of the technology. And the technology is less important as compared to the application or the solution that this technology is providing. The value to the customer, I call it as a smart automation solutions. Smart is a digital thing. Automation is the way we do where, where the, the dependency on manpower is reduced. The combination is a smart automation solution. And why is it becoming very, very important during Corona? There is no mass production anymore, ladies and gentlemen. It is customized variety of production in every sector. And COVID has resulted in this because you don't know what you should produce tomorrow. Everything is changing in every industry. Even in food and beverage industry, our wives and mothers are ordering different things on different days through the through a big basket and other things. Decentralized production is happening. That is why additive manufacturing is going to take up in a, in a phenomenal way, not only for medical industry, even other industries. So we should not neglect the opportunities of automation and digitization happening in this country. Mm. Samarth Udyog, which is a department of heavy industry, is driving the awareness program across the country. Digital India was really a good to have. Today it is must have. Startup India was good to have. Now it is must have. Many, many app developers belong to this startup era. And automation, which was earlier good to have, now it is must have. Cobotics or replacing robotics, which is extremely important for democratized automation and for flexible automation. And my friends in Universal Robo are conducting webinars uh, for, uh, for the last 10, years, 10 months. Many, many, many webinars where we have to understand the social distancing is an extremely important point which can be resolved by things like cobots. Thank you so much. And I think there are more than one reason why the COVID, before COVID, during COVID, and after COVID. I didn't mention to you the drones have become extremely important during COVID, not only in doing the conventional things, but even for commercial products delivery in some of those countries like China and uh, Europe. Drones are coming in a big way to India also. We will talk about it when we talk about technologies. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. <clears throat> that was very prescient. And thank you for covering so many points. And this has just raised the level of this discussion to 5.0. And I now invite Dr. Pan to share his views as to what has changed. Yes. Uh, if you see the uh, all the activity, all the value addition happens in a time and space. In this time and space, now what is added is, of course, the value which is, which is created there is a, I have coined a word called H uh, dimension. So in addition to value, uh, value dimension, there is a H dimension now. And because of this H dimension, what has happened with the S dimension? Health was, of course, an individual matter. 
though all over the world countries communities individuals have come forward to you know uh, uh, help and support each other in the health matters but squarely it has come to i space means all the support put together but ultimately people are realizing we are responsible for our health that is striking very hard in the psyche of the people so what is happening if you see the post covid world where uh, everything was roi you know how much you can utilize and uh, 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 space like a restaurant aviation more the you know plane gets filled profitability zooms suddenly this s factor comes in a person becomes vulnerable and even governments you know after trillion, trillion dollars pumping and giving in hands of the people people are finding them themselves helpless so this h dimension it is not a flood no tsunami has come no earthquake has come no damage has been done but everything has been shattered this this is a very subtle h dimension coming in the picture so now taking it further what i was talking about now shared spaces has been replaced by i space and this i space is happening at the neck of time and space coordinates and that's why it is so vital for us to understand this h dimension very clearly and reorient the whole value addition phenomena as such so this is the overall you know a, a macro point i'll say a zoom out kind of a you know uh, point i would like to say now if we come to the zoom in sort of uh, go to the industry level then we see that there is a cash ca cash squeeze has happened across even if the companies have demand and all current done there is a demand, there is a cash crunch oems have squeezed the cash force majors have been put suppliers got affected and what happens Ten dollars restricted by OEM results in thousand dollars in the fourth uh, tier, uh, you know, suppliers. So the cash squeeze which happens, the finance guy will not, you know, approve a single PO which is directed towards the improvement, uh, improvement or change and all. So this cash is one important aspect. Demand dry up is the second. Uh, demand uncertainty. Mr. Chandmali has rightly said. Uh, third is the upfront investment and time required for the change it is not like you put the cash on the table and you put 10 people and wow the the culture changes and you move to nowhere industry is to industry 4.0 it it has not happened even with the developed countries those who have country level mission to do it you know even germany which is the topmost uh, you know in, in the hierarchy of uh, industry 4.0 so um, it's a challenge in india we are talking about msmes employing your 90% plus population so if we if we take the multinational companies multinational suppliers where manpower cost is very very important and that is one of the factor to be considered for industry 4.0 if we keep those people aside for the time being then what we are dealing with the msmes who have their limited size limited scope limited investment opportunities and all then uh, one phenomena i call it uh, in india where about way of solving a problem i can tell you like uh, i uh, i was heading a steel plant and uh, i was uh, uh, you know uh, reviewing the security scenario in the whole plant there were 110 people employed for security and wherever there was a security problem they were trying to solve by putting one more person they did not have a better torch so even torch was replaced by putting one more person so this where about way of solving the problem because of so many constraints and issues and all uh, uh, that hinders us uh, for any evolution in the industry per se uh, i'll give you one more example i happened to visit a liquor packing company if you go to liquor packing company everything is automated but what do you see 100 peoples are doing one simple task of putting excise duty level i was shocked <laughs> you know and what happens is it is because some leakage will happen and some uh, packing has to be thrown and it has to be repacked 
uh, this uh, inspector will issue on a daily basis, a shift basis, thousands of labels, and then you will have hundreds of people just putting this label. Now you go to any industry, uh, you know, 4.0, 3.0, whatever you talk about, uh, this kind of a thing requires a very, you know, country level uh, kind of a drive and solutions. So uh, this is, uh, now if you see, uh, uh, when we are talking about industry 4.0, industry 6.0 is coming along. How I say industry 6.0 and why I say so, 30,000 satellites approval has been given to uh, Starlink, which is a Tesla, you know, Elon Musk company. 30,000 satellites. They have already put some 800 satellites. And as we speak, every month they are putting some, uh, you know, more satellites. And the first uh, uh, week of January, they will be able to give you bandwidth across the globe, anywhere, anytime. Now with this happening, try to understand uh, that, uh, now Geo has already said that they have 10,000 blockchain nodes in India established. Like that, Amazon has got approval. Uh, 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 Airtel got approval for UK. So what is happening? We are going to have a satellites connected with the blockchain nodes in the in, in the in the spaces everywhere in, in the globe. And then you have 5G, 6G. They are talking uh, in, in a very low latency and billions of sensors getting in and all. So the, what is going to happen? Whatever are the cost constraints for implementing industry 4.0? they are going to be washed aside. So we are, we are going to, I think, before we go to implementing industry 4.0, we'll be leaping to industry 6.0, which is going to be G6, you know, kind of a thing. And when I'm talking, I'm not talking about five years from now, 10 years from now, no, sir. In 21, you are going to see, even Geo has said 5G, they will implement by 21. And when they implement 5G, they know that what, uh, what can happen in 6G. So this is the context which I, will, I want to set in. And one more point, Tesla is valued now at $660 billion, which is multiple times of even Toyota. And uh, Zoom is valued uh, equal to ExxonMobil. Now, what is the implication? Implication is that if, if this technology company valued so much, and if they want to implement and give a solution to all the industry which are running. They can put $10 billion on the table and they can provide very cheap uh, you know, uh, uh, services uh, to all the industry in a reason. So this is the ecosystem changes which are going to come about. Thank you, Dr. Pant. Uh, these are very encouraging uh, scenarios and uh, now there is time for some reality check. Uh, Srikanta, as, as we have seen and experienced that Indian companies are right at the forefront of digital adoption. And this some recent surveys also confirm this, that even globally, for example, uh, Digital Transformation Index, a global survey done by Dell Technologies, found out that Indian companies are right at the top of the curve in terms of adoption of digital technologies. And this survey obviously comes from middle and top management people who, who express a desire to adopt technologies. This does not tell us about the actual implementation on the ground. So there is a, a certain desire. There is no doubt about that. But what is the reality on the ground? As Mr. Chandramali said that there are two critical pieces to this digital adoption pie. And one is uh, uh, digital and the other is automation. In your experience, an average uh, Indian manufacturer, let's take this company to be an SME, what is the level of adoption of Industry 4.0? What are the pieces that need to be integrated for them to go up the digital adoption curve? And what are the big challenges that manufacturers face on this journey? Okay, <clears throat> Anand, thanks for that. Uh, see, based on uh, our experience with the Indian manufacturers, uh, there is a lot of uh, commitment or an understanding from the management 
in terms of uh, a need for industry 4.0 uh, and an urge to get into these solutions. Uh, but of course, uh, the reality, as you mentioned, is not uh, entirely good. But this was uh, very much pre-COVID and uh, being a solution provider and a service provider, we would also go and get into discussion with our clients and tell them the benefits, talk to, to them about the roadmap, all these things. But however, the implementation could happen in uh, bits and pieces and maybe in islands. There could be POCs, there could be proof of uh, concept, proof of values and such things. But implementation wise, people used to really worry about opening their purpose. Uh, this is quite prevalent in Indian manufacturing community. And uh, if you see uh, anything which gives them quick return of investment, for example, they would compare that, let us say your solution is around 20 lakh rupees. A 20 lakh rupees IT solution may be including visualization, quality management, or maybe anything. They will compare it with, let us say, I buy a robot and put it on my shop floor. So the amount of benefit or the amount of quick return of investment, what I get with it as compared to your solution is quite uh, starkly evident that it cannot match that. So that is where I think the Indian manufacturers were a bit hesitant. But now, uh, since we're talking of COVID and post COVID situation, uh, the game has changed now. Now, in order to survive and grow, you need these te technologies. So this realization has become very evident. So it's not only the return of investment or the quick return of investment you, are, you can look at immediately that is uh, causing the thing to change. So with that pretext, uh, if you see what are the type of technologies which Indian manufacturers, Indian SMEs are interested in, uh, we normally divide this roadmap of industry food ad adoption uh, in our consultancies and in our practice sessions, we talk of four uh, stages of this industry for our production. Uh, the first stage is where you have a manufacturing company who has got assets. It could be machines, robots, various capital equipments, but none of them is connected. So this is the stage one. Many of the SMEs would be in this stage. They are not connected because of various reasons. Maybe the machines are old or the machine, they do not want to be get connected or maybe the manufacturer is quite happy with whatever productivity he's getting and is not really worried. Now the what stage the percentage, So extrapolating these numbers, what uh -huh. do you think would be the percentage of such companies in SMEs, which are at this level? Uh, if you are looking at, it is varying as per the categories. That is SMEs, MSMEs, or in case of big companies. In big companies, this is very less. Uh, let us say I, I take an automotive company or a tire one company, none of those companies will be in stage one, what I'm talking of. But SMEs, okay. you will find at least 40 to 50% would be in this level where the machines are Big not number. Connected. It's quite a huge mm -hmm. number. Now the stage two comes in where you connect all these machines, you connect all the assets, start getting the data out of them, and maybe start analyzing this data based on your tools, maybe your own tools. It could be Excel files or it could be somebody sitting at the end of the shift and finding out how many part is produced, how many got rejected and keying this, uh, this information to SAP. So here the analysis is manual, uh, maybe you're connected automatically. But with this stage uh, two, you are not actually optimizing anything in real time. There is a lot of uh, manual intervention required. Now, many of the SMEs are in this level. They have the data, but they're analyzing it very manually. Now the stage three of industry 4.0 kicks in when you actually automate your visualization and analysis of the data, maybe at least at a minor level analysis. So you are having these dashboards, you are having this uh, monitoring system, threshold systems, which can give you an alarm, which can give an alert when something goes bad. And uh, the decisions are not automated, but the visualization, the acquisition of data, everything is automated. So stage three. I find uh, many of the major companies are in stage three. That means they have visualization support, they have threshold monitoring support. But here, if you should remember is none of the decision making or optimization happens in real time. And none of the decision making is done without a manual intervention. So I think this is the stage which majority of companies are in the higher level. Maybe SMEs, you will find a smaller portion in this stage. The stage four kicks in. This is the holy grail of industry 4.0, which we all talk of. Uh, that is where the artificial intelligence, the machine learning algorithms kick in. So you have automatic data acquisition, you have storage, you have analysis done by the systems and you have decision-making being taken by the systems. 
that means when the quality is going down the system is able to analyze why it is going down compare it historically to one years old data and tell that hey look the quality could go down and maybe in a, if you go like this your quality yield rejection can be quite bad so or suggest to give a business insight maybe i have a raw materials uh, combination coming in i can suggest that with this uh, set of raw materials with this set of chemical compositions maybe my finished product will not be a good quality can i do that uh, prescription or can i do that prediction so that is where your uh, holy grail of industry 4.0 comes in and your artificial intelligence ml these are the things which uh, really add value there and this is the highest value of industry 4.0 where decision making is optimized where the ai systems can help you in decision making or they can take decisions and they can also give you business insights they can prescribe what uh, is the solution for your problem so these are the stages uh, what we are talking of and if you talk of what technologies it depends on what stage you are in because let us say a customer is in stage 1 uh, where he is not connected then you can't tell him that you take an ai solution which will give you a business insight it cannot happen so you naturally have to go step by step and that is how the solutions uh, demand in the market has also changed so post covid if you ask me uh, there are customers who are asking us for connectivity solution how do i connect all my machines how do i acquire data can i have a standard data format can i have data contextualization can i store it in a good way can i have an architecture where i can do an analysis of data in real time analysis of data historically so these are the some one set of customers who come in for the data connectivity now i also talked of uh, people in stage 3 who already have uh, acquisition happening or stage 2 who have already have a data acquisition of data storage of data also now these customers would look at uh, functional solutions for example let us say with covid you have problem of your experts going into the shop floor you have problem of uh, maybe oem support so you will look at solutions which can alleviate that pain point so what you would look at you would look at remote monitoring you would look at an augmented reality solution which can give you a guidance in terms of how a sub an assembly can be done or how a component or a big quite complex equipment can be dismantled or reassembled so these solutions would alleviate the pain points of those customers similarly the solutions would uh, which are getting traction uh, because i think uh, mr chandamuli was also talking of this non contact because this non contact is the keyword for post covid so the solutions which uh, immediately creep in when you talk of non contact is something which is doing with automation you have a robot which can do everything non contact there is no human being involved so predominantly if you see material transfer in indian industries happen by human being because the manual labor is cheap so, so when you want to move raw materials from uh, you are in input side to the manufacturing line or you want to carry for parts which have been assembled or which have been done to the dispatch area it's a human being which does it through trolleys but now you have enquiries or you have huge demand for autonomous mobile robots or amrs or autonomous intelligent vehicles uh, we have a lot of such business requirements coming in where people want to deploy them of course there are amazons which have deployed them hugely but in manufacturing industry these are really gaining traction Bosch has got a solution called as Active Shuttle, which is an autonomous, intelligent vehicle. That means you don't need to really guide this vehicle. AGVs were there around uh, in Industry 3.0, but they needed guidance. There was an optical strip on the sh shop floor or a magnetic line on the shop floor through which this used to get guided. But now with AIVs or AMRs, they don't need guidance. They can even update their map on their own. That means even if you change the shop floor, this robot will find its way. and they have traffic management that means when you deploy multiple of these robots on the shop floor they will not collide with each other nor will they cause harm to the human being they can sense it and deviate among themselves so amrs are one uh, brand of or one breed of uh, solutions which are really gaining traction and of course i talked of smart man power planning and cobots uh, collaborative robots where the robot and a human being can work together maybe the human being assembles robot tests or the robot assembles human being tests so they can work jointly because the robot will not cause problem to the human being they they can sense the human being and stop or reduce their speed so cobots are one more technology which are really gaining traction and uh, solutions uh, yeah yeah where i talked of i talked of smart man power planning which is quite important in terms of social distance maintaining can i really deploy more number of people in my shop floor or what is the limitation how much distance they need to be put in so if you have solutions on that ground people are asking them and there is a good demand for such solutions in the market so uh, in perspective if you see uh, there is no one uh, silver bullet solution uh, there is 
a requirement depending on the stage of uh, maturity of a company or a manufacturing company and there is a requirement from the immediate pain point which this customer wants to alleviate so based on this different solutions different technologies are gaining traction uh, pande i think i answered uh, your question yes we got you yes yes uh, i'd i'd ask a follow up question quickly here before i move to other panelists and i'll ask them this question as well so you you pointed out two challenges that companies have in their adoption journey one is a lack of investment or a uh, lack of an uh, understanding propensity to investment if i may say propensity to invest so yeah. that is one challenge the other uh, challenge that many respondents uh, pointed out in that survey was cyber security and the third was the in inability to understand insights from data so are these the challenges that match your experience yeah i, I can I, i think i can answer that Uh, see, uh, yes, one is uh, definitely cyber security because all these days, if you see manufacturing, the security was guaranteed because of obscurity. That means you have not connected anything, so you are very secure. But now, industry four dot zero talks of connecting everything. So once you connect, you get security issues. You can get hacked. But the importance of cyber security is: uh, suppose you have a cyber security issue in your office, the maximum thing you will lose is data, maybe some cost associated with the data. but imagine a cyber security issue with a shop floor where a robot is working with a human being and robot misbehaves the human being's life is at risk or if a machine misbehaves the operator's life is at risk so the human life is the important thing here the second important aspects of cyber security here is the damage to the environment uh, some uh, i think as many of you would have seen family man where the last episode showed uh, a factory in delhi which was releasing poisonous gases and uh, the villain operated the skada and released it but this can happen in a cyber security environment where somebody sitting somewhere outside can hack into your system and operate it and cause damage to the environment so damage to environment and damage to human being this is what is uh, the cyber security issue all about industry 4.0 but having said that there are various means and ways and technologies available to secure your entire assets uh, we call it as uh, defense in depth that means in different layers you need to build in security you need to build security at your machine level at your edge level at your cloud level you need to have firewalls you need to separate out your office environment from the machine environment so there are strategies there are technologies available which will alleviate but of course there is uh, a sense of uh, cyber security insecure feeling with customers but slowly this will go down but i would like to talk of uh, a few other things which people uh, express one is the lack of skills because if you see uh, all these days an operator was supposed to operate a machine he knew how to press some switches or load a job and load a job but now let us say i give him an ar solution he needs to operate an ar solution he needs to know how this solution can be utilized so there is a requirement for upliftment of the operator skills or upliftment generally in terms of the skill sets required for operating all these industry 4.0 tools and technologies so this is one uh, hindrance because you don't see that uh, amount of skill set right now available in the market and you talked of uh, lack of business insights uh, see uh, people expect uh, miracles out of simple solutions that is not the case you have a visualization solution it will show you how, how your oe is trending how many components you have produced how many is rejected now the decision making is upon you to see what is going behind that why the oe is dropping why my parts are getting rejected and you have to correct it so a visualization solution is like your uh, car dashboard it will only show you how much speed it's your turn to reduce the speed or do whatever you want the correction is by human being in such a solution but you come to a ai solution where the ai can take over you and do all those decision making so this is the lack of understanding among customers and why ai solutions are not very uh, like we said they are not giving insights that is what your uh, question was uh, i would uh, cite two main reasons one is see ai and ml are much hyped and they are talked more from the technology aspects of it uh, but technology is good but you should know how to apply it and how to get best value out of it this can be done by a team of domain experts who sit along with the it or the technology people and find out these are the use cases this is the way the ai can help me if that cohesiveness and collaboration happens then every ai solution can be beautifully developed to give you very good insights which currently i feel uh, with service providers uh, talking in ai way and uh, the shop floor people and manufacturing people talking in the domain way 
there is this lack of cohesiveness or lack of collaboration. If that goes away, then this uh, uh, lack of insights, what you are talking of, will also go away. And uh, one more part which I would like to bring in is uh, the lack of return of investment. Uh, many people cite this as a reason because I put a visualization solution, I don't get an immediate return of investment on it. But you need to look at uh, a progressive return of investment rather than a quick return of investment whenever you are going in your stage wise journey. So you invest on connectivity today and then you build an AI solution on top of your connectivity layer. That is when you start getting an exponential return of investment for whatever you have lacked in your earlier days. So this is something which uh, manufacturers have to realize of investment is progressive, it is sequential, and can got when only you deploy proper value-added solutions at the end of the game. So it will not happen when I just connect four missions and I start taking data and visualize it. Uh, that was not an immediate return of investment. Yes, you see, it will give you an efficiency improvement and all, but for whatever you invested, that is not an immediate return of investment. So these are the some things which uh, maybe aspiring manufacturers uh, who want to get into industry 4.0 so should be very clear of. Uh, but I think many of us are really consulting them and guiding them. So this happens. This takes time, but it is happening very well. But of course, COVID has really accelerated the trend for obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah, back to you. Thank you, Srikantha. I think as a panel, our job is done now that Srikantha has covered so many points so comprehensively. Right. Mr. Oh, no, Rao, I have much more senior have experts tough, out there sitting sorry? there. <laughs> I have much more senior experts <laughs> sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, that's why I'm confident. So, Mr. Rao, you have a tough task to add more value to what Srikanta has <laughs> Absolutely. I think he said it all and said it very well. <laughs> so, what I will basically cover is uh, on some of the technologies, I think uh, maybe I, uh, IIoT, cloud computing, robotics, etc. We've seen them all. Like, say, for uh, example, 3D printing is something that has been exhaustively used in uh, automotive as well as aerospace industry, where they have designed multiple components using different materials, technologies, etc., but that offer light weighting without compromising uh, on the quality. Similarly, when we look about uh, AR or VR, uh, they are used in manufacturing facilities, just like uh, Mr. Mowli, uh, Chandra Mowli said, to detect uh, product assemblies, etc. Even uh, AR, VR has now been used uh, in the pre uh, post-COVID situation uh, to basically build uh, uh, virtual showrooms in order to have the, uh, to basically demonstrate the capability of cars, etc. But what, uh, what I also wanted to highlight is what Dr. Harish Pan said, you know, we are moving very swiftly towards industry 6.0. And uh, what is more important is, again, what Mr. Chandramouli highlighted, that is the combination of digital and automation. So most of the people or the OEMs or the tier one suppliers that we are looking at are wanting to move away from the silos that they used to work. And uh, okay. uh, they are more aligned towards seeing how I can leverage the cloud platform or a cloud infrastructure where my team or my people can use uh, the different uh, means in order to uh, stay connected and have the business continuity. So this is where uh, the concept of digital twin, which is an essential part of uh, the next generation of industry revolution is going to be key. When I talk about digital twin, it is virtual on one side and then the real aspect uh, are coming on the others. So this is basically to connect the dots. So the whole idea is to see how uh, we can make uh, um, uh, a virtual team concept as the base for any of the manufacturing technologies that is going to come. Uh, so virtual twin actually bridges the information gap that exists between the physical world as well as the world, uh, virtual world. And this is the, the gap that needs to be uh, bridged so that uh, uh, we or the companies stay alive as they move along. Uh, so this is where the power of uh, 3D simulations can be leveraged. We have many companies just like uh, what Dr. Harish Pant said with Tesla uh, as well as uh, SpaceX, etc. They are all using this advanced technology to basically bring about the next generation of manufacturing that could happen, etc. etc. So. Uh, by creating this virtual twin, you are mimicking the entire 
man machine process activities in a, a virtual domain so that you can use the power of 3d simulations to understand and accurately predict uh, what would be the result of various strategies that could be uh, uh, happening you know once they are implemented it also helps in uh, communicating with multiple stakeholders both internal and external and you can actually understand and overcome the uh, the challenges secondly the digital and the manufacturing transport uh, transformation is basically uh, ensuring that majority of work uh, workers you know they collaborate remotely so therefore an investment in a cloud technology and real time analysis of data is going to be really really critical so just to sum up you know the cxos should look at these modular models and also plan to optimize this uh, their business uh, operations end to end uh, again uh, as uh, uh, anant uh, uh, sorry uh, aditya mentioned you know uh, the cost as well as the return of uh, sorry as uh, shrikanta mentioned the cost as well as uh, the return of investment is to be seen in a progressive way rather than looking at uh, some short term gains etc so that's where i to compliment <laughs> so I, I have been meaning to ask you this question is that in your interactions with with companies what are the major uh, barriers to adoption of industry 4.0 that you see them coming across so uh, look one the key barriers that i used to see is many of the companies as i said earlier they work in silos you know the design department doesn't know what manufacturing is doing or uh, what manufacturing uh, i mean is disconnected with some of the uh, uh, the other sub departments etc so for them uh, um, you, uh, you know uh, if the industry 4.0 has to be implemented in a true sense the connecting of the dots the information flow uh, has to be has to be perfectly uh, done in the right way you uh, you also heard uh, uh, dr pan saying that any product anywhere and mr chandramouli also saying that you know the sequence is going to be that uh, you the what is going to be manufactured in a line next is something which is going to be dependent upon uh, uh, at the last minute or so so how do you manage this kind of complexity so that was one of the key barrier that i saw with uh, the implementation uh, uh, in some of the shop floors here uh, uh, anand insightful very insightful sir mr chandramouli thing after uh... listening to all the eminent panelist sometimes even we lose track of the, what the question was but i think you are basically talking about the challenges and how to overcome them two things sir challenges challenges, challenges, was, challenges was was the second part of the question oh, okay the first part was a reality check as to at what stage the indian companies or an average indian manufacturer is that of okay, digital I think, adoption i think the first, of industry the, the reality adoption. check has been well covered by bosch and the sol because they are actually implementing projects so i will not get into that and waste more time with the panel i will definitely talk about the challenges uh, because the reality check again depends on the sectors the sectors which are uh, were growing faster after the corona will adopt it faster and the sectors which are not at all growing like the aerospace uh, will will take more time uh, healthcare industry is uh, galloping much faster than the other industries even in the case of adoption of industry 4.0 so coming to the challenges the second the second part I, is more interesting for me also to respond <laughs> is i would like to classify the challenges into six categories some of them have been covered already but to put it them in a, in a perspective of six categories the audience can take it away as a good take away the number one challenge in my opinion is a man the six are man machine material methods money and management which are the classic 6 m's we talk about but the man is the first focus i am here now talking about the those who are implementing industry 4.0 some points have been touched upon it in terms of skilling but a little bit elaboration is required on this the new job roles which are emerging are altogether different from the current conventional job roles a manufacturing engineer is a well known job role in automobile industry machine tool industry but most people have not heard the term digital manufacturing engineer 
right factory automation engineer is well known digital factory automation engineer is not well known right like that there are some 20 job roles i myself have formulated on behalf of cattle goods skill council and these 20 job roles are only driven by industry 4.0 there may be another 100 job roles which our eminent panelists will talk about but some of them may be at the different levels of the hierarchy of the job roles so developing the man the skill of the man in terms of both knowledge and competency the human development is very very important to make this uh, bottleneck get away from this the second level challenge is a champions to be created because here there is a cultural change is required it is like a change management we needed for lean manufacturing which was implemented 10 years back which is a change management required when tqm was done 20 years back it is a change management required for iso 9000 was done 30 years back it is a change management which required <laughs> six sigma was done five years back so on and so forth so this, here again is a change management issue where we need to create champions there is a program by samarth udyog c4i4 called preparing digital champions right so this is people have identified now that awareness creation at the every level of the hierarchy is becoming extremely important i call it as a first m the second m which is equally important if not more important is a method of doing things as some of our colleagues already pointed out instead of doing in silos we have to do across entire value chain at least a road map of four to five year a road map has to be done for entire value chain you know i was advising on startup venture two years back they they did not succeed in the beginning because they were looking at creating an apps for oe measurement creating an app for uh, uh, measuring the rejections visualization of so and so parameter visual so and so parameter there's no end to end approach the word end to end was already alluded by our colleague is is not just a cliche it is designed to after sale service the value chain has to be addressed within the operational excellence system design vendor management component development product development supply chain development machining assembly line after sale service including the sales process if the entire thing is covered by digital thread or digital twin and so many other methods of first simulation so that the damage is not done and then go into the reality with the virtual and the real thing and therefore the method of doing in silos but if people will say it is too expensive to do across the value chain therefore the money comes one of my other m is the money is a big challenge here the answer to this question is the oems should always take the responsibility to do end to end whereas the msmes which belong to the oems toyota and its suppliers volvo and its suppliers you know tvs motor and its suppliers tata motor and its suppliers honda and its suppliers so there should be equation well balanced equation and a collaboration between the oem on the one hand tier 1 on the one hand tier 2 and the job shops but therefore the silos will start with the job shops then couple of silos put together tier 2 three silos put together tier 1 all the silos put together is a oem so a practical methodology a strategic methodology has to be adopted and the oems to take the lead on this it is no point in saying our msmes are not gearing up to the industry 4.0 what can we do you know it's a very stupid way of looking at it because like you develop the components and you develop the msmes uh, you sweated out to do the lean manufacturing just in time arrival of components <clears throat> why not take the similar responsibility for digital manufacturing solutions across the value chain i'm going now beyond the micro system of the factory from design to after sale service into the supply chain which has got again designed to after sale service and again and again and again so this is the second thing and where i combine the method and the money and of course the material is alluded already all the components which are coming sub assemblies are coming from suppliers are we looking at blockchain technology are we using a linear concept are we using a spider concept network con aerospace industry when it revives it will be the first one to implement blockchain because a control tower wants to monitor all the tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 with mr pant being there i want to be careful i don't want to say more i am sure he has already done a research on that but more important ab ab among all these things is not not to decry this machine the machine is the equipment machine is metrology machine is inspection machine could be a cnc machine it could be an assembly line it could be a robo it could be automated guided vehicle it could be the amr which our friend talked about any equipment are we talking is it been enabled with a smart feature sensors edge devices measurements blah 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 and then visualization into a human machine interface control system etc our friend shrikant from fanuk he will know what i am talking about so this 
hierarchy of starting with sensor and the vertical hierarchy of going up to the dashboard as i say the shop floor to the top floor you know is another way of looking at the pyramid of equipment so again the machine so i think anything we do in our life we have to look at the six sms concept cash flow is extremely important money is very very important return on investment cannot be just wished away there has to be a funding subsidy government itself dhi is giving subsidy <clears throat> for even creating awareness programs not small amounts we are talking about crores of rupees samarth udyog is a concept but they want private partnership 75% government fund 25% private fund another 10 more projects on the annual the takers are still not convinced whether to go for it or not i strongly recommend all the technology partners today in the panel and others must participate in these projects because we cannot say government is doing we are not doing not we can, government can say private sector is doing we, we cannot do the challenge has to be taken at the country level macro level then at the industry level the sector level different sectors require different solutions please understand robots and cobots are for some sectors robotic process automation is for a different sector so let us not mingle all this jargons and confuse the audience millions of webinars including today's panel discussion has taken people to, you know and, and my own understanding last six months improved because <laughs> attending many webinars and giving some webinars but the way of doing things our friends talked about the value to the end customer and the value to the internal customer in the entire chain of customers is not being for promoted by all this technology providers i'm sorry to say including some of our panelists should now change their language is benefits and values and not iot not augmented reality not artificial intelligence not big data not cloud nothing just talk about are we improving the lean manufacturing parameters of quality delivery cost flexibility resilience which i talked earlier are we improving then the pain points of each customer whether is a msme or the oem will be appreciated money will be coming out of the purse shikant don't worry the purse will be open provided our first conversation with them sir tell me is your problem is quality tell me which department is got is cost of quality is running into crores of rupees cost of poor quality quality 4.0 there is a different signs of quality 4.0 there is a different signs for supply chain 4.0 there is a different signs for productivity 4.0 there is a different signs for uptime downtime 4.0 if we don't talk the customer language of the lean manufacturing excellence then this industry 4.0 another 3 years also will spend webinar 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 online discussion the audience 100 people will go away boss at the end of the session you don't know what to do then that brings me to the last but not the least point cloud and internet is not required for industry 4.0 it is a wrong assumption that on premise solution is also possible mr bosch has done excellent work mr siemens has done excellent work i visited the digital factory of siemens in kalwa i visited the earlier factory in bosch in the good old days itself they had done it you know tejo murthy and shrikant are experts on this the point is even within our manufacturing premises without a cloud or internet we can start making beginning with on premise solution which are cheaper you can do a, a subscription model whatever models you are talking about return on investment can be solved so to summarize what i am saying is maybe it's a long answer to a short question that the challenges are well known they are categorized into six <coughs> categories the solutions are hidden in the challenges by a root cause analysis like the ishikawa diagram we can find out the root cause a per challenge and then there will be a plethora of 30 root causes and we as a community can go ahead and resolve these challenges thank you so much thank you sir for a compelling and powerful argument as always dr pant yeah uh i will give a slightly different perspective to the whole thing uh if you see the during this pandemic period the valuation of top 100 companies has increased <clears throat> from 400 billion dollars to 6 uh, 6 billion as a minimum so this is the valuation in a 6 months time 400 billion dollars to 6 billion dollar plus this has happened and all these companies we are talking about about our technology companies so now we are moving towards 
a platform economy everywhere it's a e-commerce and platform driven economy we are talking about even engineering services we are talking about platform even dassault i know that they say that they provide a platform technology platform right so it is not no more erp you know connecting dots and connecting gaps and those things and all they are talking about platform so with this kind of a valuation happening when you are graduating to a platform driven economy physical as well as technological led then they are going to change the ecosystem itself because now they have trillion dollars in their hand no more million dollars for example even market leader of automotive industry in india they will think of a blockchain solution for their industry 1000 times but if geo wants they will spend 10 billion dollars and they will it will make a sense for them you know so suddenly they can put 1 lakh companies on a blockchain so geo will be happy to invest 10 billion dollars where whereas investing 10 million by market leader in india they will have 10 rounds of uh, discussion at the top level so this is the quantum of change and disruption we are talking about so with this uh, if we see that uh, we cannot have a ola app kind of a solution for 10 cars this is a mistake we are doing when you are developing a ola kind of a app uber kind of an app where thousand people thousand engineers will be working to improvise the app and continuously change tweak it and all every day there will be update and all and then you cannot do it for 100 cars it has to be 1 million cars this is the capacity of this app so thousand engineers they will make a system for a 1 million car and it will work seamlessly whatsapp is working for is going to work for billion people we know that and not only just contact but e-commerce also commerce also is going to happen in through whatsapp so what what is going to happen is let us not make any mistake the kind of a disruption which we are going to see not very far off by 2025 is that either a company will become a coin minter you have a press mint just press the uh, 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 make a press and you have a coin in your hand otherwise everything will be given by amazon say for example they you need finance there is a finance arm you need payment that will be provided for raw materials any material you require for your company our uh, they can send an engineer and they can give everything online so they will uh, they will know about your demand through data science and the kind of a capability amazon has they are predicting for the whole world and for the country and you know so for predicting what your industry will need it will be 10 years off for them so what is going to happen uh, unless or until we understand that the future technology whatever we are talking about it is for a platform it is for a scope and scale which is futuristic and it is going to make a sense only when we change our business context if we don't change the business context then we are going to make a patch up kind of a uh, job which is not going to work and every time will be you know short in what is expected uh, out of this industry one more perspective is Uh, that uh, when people tear up tear down the t3 of tesla they found that the best of the oems they found to their surprise that a couple of dozens of uh, uh, ecus which they were using for autonomous vehicle it has been replaced by a one small chip by tesla okay three three chips actually they are talking about and it is uh, hardware and software like it is a iphone for the car so and there uh, uh, apple has introduced 5 nano uh, uh, iphone uh, and, and and other devices 3 uh, nano has already been developed 
so if you talk about 3 nano chip if you put in tesla you may come up with a small one square centimeter kind of a device which will throw in a aeroplane it will start flying and you will be able to operate anything and everything in the world so that kind of a capability we are talking about coming up by 2025 so with this kind of a thing happening the now dozens of you know sensors and dozens of uh, the ecus are getting replaced by one simple device or couple of devices now lot of oems they invested in the latest technology of sensors and cameras radars and everything and all suddenly they are realizing that tesla is 5 years ahead and like that there are many startups coming up so this is the disruption we are talking about you might be implementing industry 4.0 for but for the 18th century product you know and then you will find suddenly you are gone from the scene uh, one more example i will like to say that i happen to talk with the uh, uh, with the o, uh, automotive oem managing director straight i to i and i requested him why you know a blockchain solution for the industry is available it is available it is it has been uh, it has been rolled out uh, it has been implemented by few and i requested that why this cannot be implemented at industry level but what happens solutions are available but what happens for a industry kind of initiative there is not much of a motivation because the oems have developed their ecosystem their uh, you know digital ecosystem has been provided to their suppliers and in that they are operating happily when something has to be done for a country level or industry level then there is a disinterest uh, motivation is not there so why should we you know that kind of a thing but what's going to happen when the product will be no more important tesla is already saying 1 million uh, you know uh, battery life 1 million i mean for the life you don't require any repair in the vehicle except tires that is the car going to you going to have and utilization is going to be more than 80% and your ride will cost uh, one third of the present uh, you know mileage cost when these kind of a things have, will happen then those industry will find justification for a country level and industry level uh, solutions so that's why we need to get the context right unless until that happens it, it is not going to be helpful so this is my take on uh, uh, this uh, digital uh, digitalization digitization and uh, you know industry 4.0 let's Thank get you, the context right uh, get it to the future and uh, so here what uh, the one most important thing is that consolidation is inevitable that's true you cannot be manufacturing one product one thing one solution and you think you will be living happily thereafter after implementing latest of the te technologies and all it is not going to that's happen that's true Uh, we are seeing in bangalore itself pinia industrial area where a lot of many companies got affected and now everybody is uh, you know thinking uh, their marketing is not effective you know had there been marketing they would have done wonders but where is the market you know so suddenly they realize that this tiny mom and pop kind of a shop kind of a you know situation it is not going to work out it is it is not going to work out so it's the time that hundred of those companies they pool together and then they go to a you know solution providers like the so and others and say that what is the solution for us then they will be able to have a industry expert and other things and all then then all these things will make sense otherwise it's difficult so the whole thank you sir paradigm change is required this is true, my submission true. very true sir thank you so much dr pan it was very insightful any questions from the attendees do please write those in the chat window so we uh, unless we have a question in the next uh, few seconds we need to have a hard stop at 4 and it's 4 now thank you so much gentlemen this was easily you know the most insightful debates i've had
uh, in the in my recent experience a lot to add we'll cover this interview on in our magazine and our website so many takeaways our readers will benefit a lot have a brilliant brilliant day for yourselves thank you so much for coming to our panel thank you mr pande i think thank you very much for giving us an opportunity it was a great learning experience for each of us also thank you arnav uh, thank you all the eminent panelists thank you so much thank you mr pande and all our eminent panelists thank you so much thank you sir thank you pleasure to interact with you all if the Take participants care. have any questions they can route it through dynamic manufacturing and all our eminent panelists can respond to that because we are closing with the hot stop now but we'll do that sir pointed they can raise questions and offline we can answer them thank you so much mr pande thank you we'll do that sir take care thank you.